Hi, I'm Nancy, and this is Allie. Hi. And Allie and I will be doing an adaptive yoga class today. Adaptive yoga is taking traditional yoga poses and adapting them so that they work specifically for our bodies. We'll be moving through a lot of breath work today, as well as taking traditional yoga poses in an adaptive approach. So the poses will look a little bit different on everyone that does them. And in reality, all yoga is adaptive yoga because one size doesn't fit all. So let's start by sitting up in our chairs, sitting up nice and tall. You wanna have your feet flat on the floor and having your feet on a nice flat surface. Good, rest your palms on your thighs. And as you inhale, lift your chest. You'll hear me say lift your chest a lot throughout the class. Lifting your chest helps to give you energy it helps to, you to feel more open and more free in your yoga practice. So as you inhale, lift your chest. Roll your shoulders back and down. And on an exhale, allow your eyes to close if that feels comfortable for you. Not everyone's comfortable doing yoga with their eyes closed. So if closing your eyes doesn't feel right, just go ahead and look down towards your feet or toward the floor and let your eyes become quiet and soft. And then begin to connect with your breath. So actually begin to feel your inhales and your exhales. And as you inhale, continue to lift your chest and spread across your collarbones, letting your shoulders come back and down. And as you exhale, feel how your belly changes as you exhale. Let your belly become soft, almost fluid, so that the breath becomes more intense, more filled with awareness. So as you inhale, lift your chest. And as you exhale, soften and release your shoulders. Let your legs rest, let them be in their natural state. Let your palms rest on your thighs. Having your palms down helps you to feel more grounded, more connected to your body, which is why we're doing this yoga practice in the first place. So allow your breath to move freely in and out. Actually begin to feel your breathing. Begin to slow your breath down, make it more even. And as your breath begins to be slower and smoother, it becomes more even throughout. So the three key words for the breath is soft, slow, and smooth. Let the breath be soft, slow, and smooth. And now press down through the bottom of your feet really sensing the awareness of the placement of your feet, pressing down through your heels, pressing down through the balls of the feet. Give your hands a little bit of pressure on your thighs. And as you press down with your hands, lift your chest again. Let your shoulder blades come into your back body to lift and spread your chest even more. And then bring your awareness back to your breath. Instead of just closing your eyes, let the upper eyelid actually rest on the lower eyelid so that the eyes can become quiet. Allow the inside of your mouth to feel soft. Let the tongue release. Let the jaw be softer. And on your next inhalation, draw your palms together at the center of your chest, taking your palms together in namaskar in front of your heart. And once again, lift your chest up into your thumbs, opening your chest once again, releasing your shoulders back and down. And on an exhalation, bow your head. Bow your head to your heart. Feel the beating of your heart against your hands. Feel the way your breath moves in and out of your body. And then on your next inhalation, lift your chin. Release your hands to your thighs again and open your eyes. You feel like you did a little yoga already? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so breathing this way really helps us to prepare our body to do yoga. Yoga is different from what we do throughout the day. So we really want to get ourselves in a place where we're preparing our minds to do yoga. We're really making a shift in what happens in our body and our body-mind connection. Okay. So Allie and I are gonna show you a setup for helping you to feel more grounded as you're sitting. 
Now if you're sitting in a chair and you're pressing down into your feet and you're using the muscles of your legs, you can feel that connection more soundly. But for Allie, being in a wheelchair, she can press down through her feet, but we're gonna help her to feel more grounded by using some support other than this metal underneath her feet and also by belting her knees together, okay? So Allie and I worked this out and we have a pretty good system. This is so a lot of people think that because you can't feel your legs that you wouldn't be able to push down through your feet and it's not about the actual sensation of pushing down. It's, um, it's a little bit more of like a visualization thing for me mm -hmm. of the idea of grounding your feet into the ground. So what we're really asking Allie to do and other students to do is actually take their mind into the place of their body that we're talking about. So in a, in, in a way, it's very audio, isn't it? And when you hear the word, you connect with that part of your body. So we're gonna place this, this half brick, which is a really nice piece of wood, underneath Allie's feet. And then we're gonna place a blanket in place. And when Allie replaces her feet here, she'll be on top of the wood, which is firm and solid and supportive. And then also on top of this blanket, which is kind of nicely cozied in around her feet. And then Allie will place another block between her knees. And she has figured out an ingenious way to strap the belt around all the props <laughs> to make it work. So if you hold that in place, I'll start the belt for you. Props are really helpful. Don't be afraid to use them. Props help to take us not only deeper into the pose itself, but also help us to understand the essence of the pose more fully so that we get, we get the full benefits of the pose as they were intended. So once we get the belt around Allie's knees, she's gonna stick her finger underneath the belt. And she, then with her other hand, she'll pull the belt nice and tight until it feels taut on her finger. But you don't want the belt so tight that it's, it's inhibiting the circulation in your legs, right? And how does that feel now? feels great, it helps her to feel grounded and contained, right? So that there's more of a connection to finding where your body is in space, which is why we use the props in the first place. Okay, so pressing down into your feet, squeezing the block or drawing your knees into the block and she can be contained in this pose by the belt holding her in place. Take your palms and place your plums, palms right at the top of your thighs. And I'm gonna ask you to press down into your palms. Just see what that feels like to have a little bit of pressure on your legs, right? And now, see what it does to my chest? I dropped my chest, I rolled my shoulders forward. So as I'm pressing down into my feet and I'm pressing down into my thighs, I'm gonna lift my chest and roll my shoulders back and down. So I'm keeping that same openness in the front of my body that I had before when we were seated. Right? So keep pressing down into the thighs and taking the shoulders and rolling them back. You can even start to take your elbows in toward the sides of your body. And then on an exhale, maintain that work of lifting the chest as you release your arms and stretch your arms down along your body. And I'm gonna ask Ali to take her arms back and turn her palms forward. So she can keep, keep rolling her shoulders back and lifting and spreading across her chest. Good. And then to the degree that you can, see if you can take your arms a little bit up to the sides, turning your palms up to the ceiling. We're gonna go very slowly as we do this. Keep pressing down into your feet, pressing down into the tops of your thighs as you lengthen up the front of the body and lift your chest. Keep stretching out through your fingers, taking the arms up a little bit more each time you breathe. So stop, take a breath in. As you exhale from the center of your chest, stretch your arms out away from the center of your body. Keep pressing down into your feet. Keep pressing down on your thighs, referencing the belt or the blocks. And on your next in inhalation, see if you can take your arms up a little bit higher. So we're not going to take the arms all the way over the head, but we're rolling the shoulders back and spreading the fingers and stretching the arms. And then without dropping your shoulders or your chest, Turn your palms toward the floor. Take some concentration. And then exhale and slowly release your arms down to the side. And we're gonna do that a couple of more times, but this time we're gonna do it a little bit more quickly. 
And what I want you to do is as you turn your palms up and lift your arms up, I want you to press against the air, almost the way it would feel as if you were swimming, pushing water out of your way with your hands. So lifting the arms up just above the shoulder with one inhalation and then exhaling and drawing the arms back down again. Good, and inhaling and turning the palms up, lifting the chest even more this time as you dive back up to the top. Good, keep pressing down on your feet and your thighs and exhaling, turning the palms, releasing the arms. Good, and one last time, swimming back up to the top. Turning the palms, lifting the chest, really lengthening out through the arms. This time when the arms reach just above the shoulders, really stretch out, spread your fingers apart from each other. Pressing down through your heels again. Pressing down through your heels and lifting your chest to lengthen your entire spine. And then turning the palms down and exhaling and releasing. Each time we do a pose, we'll take a slight beat after that pose. There's a lot of things that happen to your body when you change the position of your body. And you really want to let that pose kind of soak in and have its effect. And definitely enjoy its effect on your body, too. Okay. So taking a breath in. Nice full breath out. This time we're going to keep the, the right arm down. We're going to turn the left palm up like we did before, and this time we'll just take one arm up. Okay, so you're stretching this arm away from the center of your chest as if you were holding something in the palm of your hand. Stretching the other arm down along your sides. Once again, press into your feet and lift your chest, lengthen up through your spine. This time we're going to take the arm straight up overhead. So as one arm is reaching down, the other arm is reaching straight up, and lift your chest. Pull your hands in opposite directions. Good, and then turning the palm toward the floor again. Exhale and release your hand. And coming back to the center, turning your head back to the center. Once again, lift your chest, roll the shoulders back and down, pressing through your feet, pressing through the thighs, keeping the whole spine lengthening upward. Good, reach down through the left arm. Turn the right palm up, and just as we did on the other side, inhale and sweep that arm up overhead. So really pulling the, the hands and the arms in opposite direction. The whole time the feet are pressing down into the foundation of the pose. And we lift the chest and lengthen the spine. And then turning the palm toward the floor, exhaling and releasing the arms down. And then rest your hands on your thighs and take a breath. This time Allie and I are going to do a variation of extended mountain pose, where we take the arms up overhead. And we're going to do it um, in the traditional pose. We bring the arms into, or the hands into namaste or namaskar and stretch the arms up overhead. And Allie and I have worked out a way to do this with the blocks. So I'm going to hand Allie a block. And we're going to take our hands onto the block as if we were holding our hands in namaskar. We'll press down through our feet again, pressing the palms into the block. Lift your chest and roll your shoulders back. And as we inhale, we're going to take the block and the arms straight up overhead. So on an inhalation, squeezing the block with your hands, stretch your arms straight up overhead. Good. Working with this pose until the arms are completely straight. So in the beginning, the elbows may want to bend and the shoulders may feel tight and restricted. But the more you do this pose, the more you'll gain freedom in the motion of your arms. So stretching the arms up overhead, <laughs> lifting your chest and squeezing the block. You'll actually begin to feel heat building in your body as you do this. And then exhale and release the palms down to your heart again. And can we do that one more time? It feels good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so squeezing the block with your hands. Really take the elbows out to the side this time and roll the shoulders back and down. The more you lift your chest, the more mobility you'll find in your shoulders. Pressing down through your feet, referencing the block between your knees if you're using one, and squeezing into that. As you inhale, lift your arms up overhead. See if you can make that block move in a completely vertical position, as if the block itself were lifting you up. And then really straighten the arms, lift up, lift your chest even more. Now see if you can take the arms back behind the ears slightly, really stretching and opening the front of the body. And then exhale, bringing the block back down in front of your heart. 
Good. This time, let's lay the block down on our thighs and just take the hands together for a moment in Namaskar. So as we press the palms together, lift the chest again. Good. And then exhale and release your hands to your lap. So one of the things that helps us to feel grounded in the seating poses, and the poses that we're doing right now, are really adaptations of some very traditional standing poses. And one of the things that helps us in standing poses is to feel very grounded in our legs. So we're going to take the block and place it all the way up at the top of our thighs. And then elbows on the block. And the more you press down on the block, the more you'll feel that grounding in your thighs. Yeah? And then inhale and lift your chest. It's hard to lift your chest when you've got your elbows on your block. But we can take the palms together here. Good. Here you go. Good. And keep pressing down and lifting the chest as you push down on the blocks. Good. And then exhale and release. And we'll move the blocks off to the side. So now we're going to come into a twisting pose. So twists are really great for not only the mobility of your shoulders and your arms, but also for your back, from your lower back all the way up through your neck. Twisting poses also sort of massage the internal organs and help the systems of the body to really work better. So we'll be taking a seated twist that's based on a very traditional yoga pose. And again, pressing down through the feet and the legs. The most important thing about twists is you want to get a lot of length in your spine, a lot of length in your trunk as you turn, so that your body can turn around the axis of your spine. So first let's stretch the arms down along the sides again. And I'm going to hold the bottom of the legs of my chair actually with my hands, and you can hold on to your, your wheels, and lift your chest and roll your shoulders back and down. So you feel that nice length that comes into your spine. And then you'll take your right hand to your left knee, or you can hold on to the outside of your chair. And moving your left arm behind you slightly, inhale and lift up again, lift your chest. Good, and roll your shoulders back and down as you turn your navel and your ribs around to the right. Now, if you're working with a friend, someone can come behind you and help you with your twist by guiding your shoulders and just giving you a little bit of support so that you can find that you move maybe a little deeper into the twist. Good. And once again, lifting your chest and pressing down through your feet so you're staying grounded in the pose. And then on an exhalation, releasing the pose, coming back to the center. Good. And then we can do the other side. So once again, extending your arms along the side, get something to hold on to so that you can lift up out of that place. And then taking your left hand to your outer right knee, this time we'll be twisting in the opposite direction. And so turning the navel and turning the navel and the rib cage around to the left. Again, you can see how I'm working with Ali here where I'm not really giving her the adjustment or helping her to do the pose, but I'm helping her to find the pose more by just referencing her shoulders with my hands. This way she can go deeper into her twists and get more benefits from the pose. Good. And then exhaling and releasing and coming back to the center. Good. So rolling the shoulders back and down again, lifting the chest and lengthening up through the spine. We'll take the arms one more time up overhead. This time we're going to take the arms up and out to the side as we come overhead as we did before. So we worked with the block before on this and now we're going to keep that reference of the block in our, in our memory as we stretch the arms up. But lifting the chest, really lengthening up through the torso. And then turning the palms down, exhaling and coming back down. We're going to work on some poses now called forward bends. Forward bends help us to extend the spine forward. So we're extending the trunk out over the thighs. Some of this work can be done with a partner, but can also be done at a wall. So I'm going to move in a little bit closer to Allie. And before she comes into the forward bend, I'm actually going to place my palms. So this is some partner work that you can do with a friend. You can also press down on your thighs if you're practicing by yourself. So pressing down on your thighs to ground your thighs and lifting up through your chest. Now I'm going to reference Allie's knees with my hands by pressing down. And Allie's going to stretch her arms forward toward my shoulders. She can even reach out and grab my shoulders. 
There you go. And then pressing her palms down on my shoulders, she's gonna lift her chest. Good, and extend her fingers beyond my shoulders. So it's as if I weren't even there. She's just stretching out over me. Once again, I'm referencing her knees to keep her grounded in the pose as she presses down through her feet. Good. Now, as she lengthens up and over my shoulders with her arms, she continues to lift her chest and extend her spine. I'm gonna leave her legs. She's gonna keep pressing down. Then I can take my hands onto her hands and stretch her even deeper into the pose. Whenever you're a partner giving a stretch or helping to assist in a pose, make sure that you're keeping yourself safe by lifting your chest and doing a pose too. So I continue to press down through my feet and Allie goes deeper into her forward bend. Good. And then she lifts her head, keeping her spine in a concave position as she inhales to come up. And she can rest her palms on her thighs <laughs> and take a breath. Okay. So if you're wanting to try a forward bend on your own, you can use the wall. If you're in a wheelchair, be sure to lock your brakes and then extend your arms out, place your hands on the wall and think about grounding through your feet and your hips, lifting your chest and rolling your shoulders back. And then if you want a deeper stretch, you can climb your hands up the wall, really spreading those fingers wide. So for the second part of the class, we'll be doing some poses on the floor, on a mat. Doing adaptive yoga poses on the floor is similar to doing standing poses in a traditional class. So Allie and I are gonna show you how she transitions from her chair down to the mat, where we'll work some variations of traditional standing yoga poses, as well as some reclining poses as well. So, ready? Yes. Let's do it. First, I lock my brakes. So if you, I'm gonna scoot forward and if you will put my feet on the, on the ground. Thank you. And then if you'll lift underneath both of my knees and guide them out while we move out. One, two, three. There we go. Thank you. Very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> so Ellie's gonna sit up in a just an, an, a seated pose. She's gonna keep her chest nice and lifted. We're gonna give you, um, let's actually give you, oh great, you can start by sit, sitting in, um, yeah. in cross-leg pose. So we'll be sitting in cross-leg pose together, also called Sukhasana or easy pose because it's just a comfortable cross-legged position. I specifically like to have something a little bit underneath my tailbone um, to sit up because uh, I've had some skin issues. So if you have had skin issues on your tailbone, be sure to be sitting on something. So one of the ways you can do that, because sometimes also if, if the tailbone is misshapen or there's been a break in the tailbone, we can do a little setup that makes it very comfortable to sit. And I'm gonna set that up for Allie right now. So what you can actually do is taking two blankets, laying them side by side, So there's a little sort of channel in between the two blankets and then she can sit up on that. How's that? That's great. Yeah, then there's a little place for your tailbone to release down into, which can be very comfortable. Sitting up comfortably is really important, especially when you're sitting on the floor. If it's uncomfortable to sit in a yoga pose in the first five seconds, it's going to be excruciating in about 30 seconds. So you wanna make sure that you're as comfortable as possible. So sitting together in Sukhasana, or cross-leg pose, we'll take our hands to the front of our knees and we will lift our chest. So as you inhale, lift your chest, sit up nice and tall, right? Really rolling the shoulders back and down. And then bending the elbows out to the side and coming just slightly forward, 
right? So what you want to be doing every time you bend forward is really lengthening up the front of the body and rolling the shoulders down the back of the body. And just as we did before in the chair, we're going to do a quick twisting pose. So we'll take the, right, the left hand to the right knee, taking your right hand behind you, just twisting a little bit to the right, just kind of getting yourself used to being in a new position on the floor. Good. And then as you exhale, come back to the center. Good. Lifting up again, making space in your spine. Take your right hand to your left knee, your left hand behind you, and a small twist to the left. Right. And then exhaling and coming back to center. So we're going to have Allie come down on her back now so she can lower herself down. I'm going to get some blankets for you. So I'm going to give Allie a blanket for under her head just so that she's really comfortable. And using a rolled blanket, let's use this bolster. This might be even better. Perfect. So we have a nice fat bolster to support her legs. Okay. So the same thing that happened when we were sitting is going to happen here. Allie's going to press down through her heels, bringing her mind into her legs, pressing down through the inner leg, pressing down through the inner heel. And then she's going to stretch her fingers, stretch her fingers toward the bolster. You can even hold on to the sides of your bolster with your hands and really roll your shoulders back and down and lift your chest. And then on an inhalation, go ahead and take your arms straight up. So your arms are straight up toward the ceiling, palms facing each other. Good. Continuing to press out through the heels, rolling the outer thighs toward the inner thighs. So there's actually some rotation in the legs that's happening here. Belly is softening back toward the spine. And then on an exhalation, she can take her arms all the way overhead. So Allie, stretch your arms over your head, bringing your thumbs down toward the floor. Good. And I'm going to just stand behind her here and let her hold on to my ankles. Good. And again, I'm doing a yoga pose too, so I don't want to be straining my back while I'm helping my friend. So I'm letting her just kind of pull on my ankles a little bit as I lean back into her hands. You getting a good stretch in your arms, Allie? Yes. And then I can slowly start to walk my feet back. At the same time, I can reference the outside of her arms with my hands and just give her more stretching here. Good. And then as she releases my ankles, taking your arms out to the side, Good, palms facing upward, just as we did when we were sitting in the chair. So stretching your arms out to the side. And that same kind of action that we did before when we were sort of swimming in the chair, taking the arms up towards your head, and then turning the palms and bringing them slowly down toward the sides. And we'll do that a couple of more times, inhaling, taking the arms overhead, and then returning the palms to the sides. So a nice, slow stretching action in the arms. The whole time the chest stays lifted. We're pressing out through the heels. And then returning the palms to the floor. Good. And on the next inhalation, we're going to take, we're going to do a variation of a pose called Supta Padugastasana, or hand to big toe pose. So in this pose, we take the knee into the chest. There's a slight variation of the pose. I'm guiding Allie's leg, but I'm not doing the pose for her. I'm just helping her to reference her leg and to feel the pose a little bit more fully. So Allie's going to clasp both of her hands on the front of her knee and just draw her knee into the chest. And then she rolls her shoulders back and down and lifts her chest. At the same time, I'm going to keep referencing the bottom of Allie's foot by pressing my hand into her heel. And she can slowly draw her knee into her chest. This pose will look different on everyone that does it. We all have a different range of mobility in our hips and different abilities in how we can move our legs. So this is how the pose works for Ellie. How does that feel? Great. Good. And then as she releases her leg, I'm going to just stretch her leg back out over the bolster. I'm going to stop while her leg is right here at a 90 degree angle and just kind of move the leg around in the joint a little bit. 
so that she's getting just a little bit of stretch in her hip flexors. That's okay. Can I go more? Yeah, good. Just making circles with the leg. This is where practicing with a friend can really come in handy. There you go. And we'll stretch the leg out over the bolster. Good. So take a breath again, lift your chest. I'm going to ask you to place your palms down on the floor and really give your chest a big lift here. So just like we were doing when we were sitting up in the chairs. It's really important to keep the chest lifted and the front of the trunk really long. Good. And then we'll do the other side. So again, I'm going to reference the bottom of Allie's feet. Bring her knee in toward her chest. You can clasp your hands at the front of your knee, drawing the knee into the chest. I'm just referencing the bottom of her foot with my hand. As she draws her knee into the chest, lift the chest. Really lift the chest and take the shoulder blades in. Always coming back to your breath, always really connecting with the breath again. The breath helps us to stay present in the pose, which is really important. It helps us to stay present to ourself, which is also very important. This way we never overdo, right? Mm -hmm. And then as you release your knee, again, I'm going to take Allie's leg back into this 90 degree position. I just need to reposition myself in the pose. And then I can just give her a little bit of range of motion in her hips. That okay? Yeah. Getting out of the chair and moving onto the floor is really beneficial. There's a kind of freedom that comes, I think, from being on the floor. And whether you're in a wheelchair or whether your mobility is limited such that getting down on the floor can be difficult, Work in steps. Try sitting on lower heights. Try doing things on your bed where it's safe in the morning when you stretch or even when you're sitting on the couch. There's a feeling of being connected to the ground that if you're in a wheelchair, you're not getting as often because you're literally floating on wheels. So to have your feet or your hands or your entire body on the ground is, feels really Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the last pose, we're going to take your knees all the way into your chest, both knees, okay? So we'll work together on that. So I'm going to just help you guide. And actually, you could maybe do this, most of this yourself. There you go. And so both knees into your chest, and you're going to wrap your arms around the front of your knees. Now I'm going to ask Allie to separate her hands and just hold on to her knees, one with each hand. So you've got one knee in each hand. And then she can do a little bit of that same rocking action that I created for her. This is going to do a couple of things. It's going to give her that same range of motion in her hips that we were working on together. It allows her to do this practice by herself. This would be a great thing to do first thing in the morning when you wake up and your body's kind of stiff. It also helps to kind of give her a little bit of a back massage, too, because she's lying down. How's that feel? Pretty good? Awesome. <laughs> That's better than pretty good. good. And then you can change the direction of the circles. So going clockwise and then counterclockwise. The whole time the chest stays lifted and you stay present in your breath. Good. And then we'll stretch her legs out once again over the bolster. Good. And pressing down the palms, pressing the palms into the mat or into the floor. And you definitely don't need a yoga mat to do yoga. Lying on the floor, on a blanket, even on your bed, as I mentioned before, is a really accessible way to practice. Good. And one last time, taking the arms out to the side, sweeping the palms up and overhead, exhaling, returning the arms to your side. Good. Turning the palms up and breathing, taking the arms up over the head. Very similar to the way we would do in a traditional sun salutation. Good. And one last time. This time sweeping the arms up overhead. Really stretch up through your arms. Big lift to your chest, stretching out through your heels. And exhaling the arms to the side. 
So for the last pose that we're going to do, we're going to do what's called a supported chest opening, which is a kind of supported back bend or backward extension, so that your body is in the shape of a back bend, but you have the support. And from there, we'll segue right into Shavasana, or the final resting pose. So one of the nice things that happens when, you, when you're in a supported chest opening is that all the muscles in the chest help to really get open. And we talked a lot in this class about lifting our chest. Now we have an opportunity to have our chest lifted for us. And it helps us to breathe more fully and be more connected to our body through the breath. So I'm going to move Allie's bolster out of the way. And ask her to come back up to a seated position. And then we'll set up two blankets. Most people have blankets at home. Not everyone has bolsters. So blankets are a really great way to create your own bolster. I'll set up two folded blankets for Allie to recline on. So before you come back, there's also a blanket for her head. And we want to place your bolster back in place after you lie back. So as she comes back, she keeps that lift of her chest as she comes back. How's that? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so there's space on either side of the folded blankets for her shoulders to release into. So you can see that the muscles of the chest really get an opportunity to expand and open in a very soft and supported way. Now, if she were only holding this pose for a short period of time, you could do this with your legs crossed like this mm -hmm. and just change the cross of the legs if you like. But because we're going to be coming into Shavasana, we're going to support your legs on the bolster again. So. So now she can rest. Now she can let everything go. Now she can be, and you can be, in a supported, relaxing pose where you just surrender into the props the way that you've set them up. So you want to make sure that your props are set up so that you're very comfortable. Because like I said, when you're using props or when you're in a pose, if it doesn't feel right in the first few seconds, you'll be uncomfortable after a little while. So make sure you're set up as comfortably as possible. You can release the legs completely, release and relax the arms completely. The chest is open and lifted. You no longer have to work to do anything except not do anything. And sometimes that can be a challenge. If you feel comfortable closing your eyes, allow your eyes to close. Otherwise, just look down towards your chest. Let the muscles of your face relax. Let the neck and throat be soft. And once again, find your breath. Come back to your inhales and your exhales, connecting more fully to each breath. Let the breath be soft, slow, and smooth. Let the breath be even. And as you exhale, release the consciousness of your physical body. Let your physical body and the awareness of it just go for a moment and bring your awareness back to your breathing. Soft, slow, smooth breath. And then you can stay in Shavasana as long as you like. Namaste.